Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Eric and I like to read. Today I'm going to be ranking all of my John Green books and you guys are going to find out which ones I think are the worst and which ones I think are the best. So for this video, I want to build the anticipation so you guys have to try and figure out which one that I like the best. So I'm going to start from worst and make my way up to the best book. I feel like a lot of you will probably already guess, or you might guess which one I like the best, but we will see. So I only have six of John Green's books, and these are the ones that I have read personally. So I'll just be ranking these six books. I know he has some other ones that I haven't gotten to yet, like Let It Snow, but these are the ones I do have. So I'm gonna rank these ones. So coming in last place, at number six, we have An Abundance of Catherines. I read this one as part of a book club that I formed with my friends when I was in college. And this one will probably be my least favorite John Green book. Uh, the main character, he's just, he's very analytical and there's a lot of things to do with math in this book. And I am not a mathematical person. I like um, spelling and like word searches and things like that. So when it comes to like math problems and math equations, I am just like, I'm gone. I can't do that stuff. I rely on my phone calculator for everything. So yeah, this, like I just, I didn't really relate to the characters a lot in this book. And I found that the storyline just wasn't very captivating. So this one is in last place. Then number five would be Looking for Alaska. Uh, I know a lot of people really enjoy this book and a lot of people really like this book and I did enjoy the book. I will say that I read the book, I think in, well, no, I, I know I read this book in one day. Um, that being said, I think I just read it in one day because I really liked John Green's writing style. I found that there were a lot of character flaws in this book that were a little bit problematic and they weren't necessarily promoting healthy behavior. Um, I mean, a lot of his characters don't really promote healthy behavior. That being said, this book did deal with a lot of hard hitting topics that I do feel are needed and I feel like they should be addressed. I just personally, out of the rest of the books that I had to choose from, this one just happened to rank down in fifth place for me because I liked the other ones more. Now in fourth place, which one do you guys think it is? No? Huh? Well, it is Paper Towns. This one I actually really did enjoy. I loved Paper Towns. It was a great read. I think I really liked it because of the travel aspect because they're kind of like going on this search for Margot. And I just, I really like books that have road trip um, vibes to them. I just think they're so much fun and it feels like I get to experience these places at the same time as the characters. Um, there was all, a lot of like friendly banter in this book too that just like kept cracking me up the whole way through. And I just really also liked the mystery of it. I found that it was very captivating to find out all these little bits and pieces as you went along and you were just like, you were wanting to know what was gonna happen. Like I remember flying through this book. I actually saw this movie too and I thought the movie adaptation was done really well. I think that Cara Delevingne did an amazing job as Margot and Nat Wolf played Quentin and he also did a fantastic job. I would recommend definitely watching the movie if you want to see the adaptation for this book. Read the book first because the book's great, but if you want to see the movie, like it is really well done as well. Then in third place, we have Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Now, also, I love this book cover. I find it stunning. Um, this book is really good because it like addresses a lot of mental health issues, which I think is very important. And I enjoyed the main character. I found that she was very real. And I also really enjoyed her friend Daisy. She cracked me up so much. She was so funny. I feel like Daisy deserves a spinoff because she was just that great. But yeah, this book was really good. It also had that like kind of mystery element to it that John Green kind of puts in with a lot of his books. Well, it depends. Some of his books have the mystery element and then the other ones are just like 
very hard hitting and emotional. If anyone is interested in reading this book, it's about Aza, who's the main character that deals a lot with mental illness and her best friend Daisy. And they're trying to solve this mystery of this billionaire fugitive that has gone missing. They don't know what happened to him. And so the two of them have kind of like taken on the mystery and they're being detectives and trying to figure out what happened to this man. And that's generally like what the story is about. Uh, it is a definitely a good read. I strongly recommend this book. And yeah, so that's my number three choice. Then in second place, we have Will Grayson, Will Grayson. I talked about this, I think in my last video, but I just love this book. This book is so, so good. It's such a heartwarming book. It's about two boys named Will Grayson and they end up meeting each other um, and just kind of like forming this relationship. It just blossoms into so much more than what they would have expected meeting somebody with the exact same name as yourself. And so I just, oh, they're two very different people, but everything that they do together and like the relationship they form is just so cool and so fantastic. It has a lot of LGBTQ plus rep in it, which is another reason why I really like this book. It also has some musical elements to it. So I thought that was really cool. Like, like musicals like Rent and like Cats, like that kind of musical. So I thought that was really cool because it was kind of bringing like a whole new meaning to like high school musical. I really enjoyed the mixture of personalities and I'm not sure if that's because like David Leviathan and um, John Green wrote this together. That could be that they like kind of each took on a character and wrote them, which makes me more excited because I actually just got another book by David Leviathan and I'm really excited to check that one out. It's called Boy Meets Boy. I think that'll be an interesting one. But yeah, this book, I don't know, it made it in the number two spot because it was just, I just had such a good time reading this book and I really, really enjoyed the characters. And like, that's one thing I do have to say about John Green's writing is that he does a really good job with all of his characters. Like, I think that they're all very like different, but like they're so well done and they're very realistic and emotional. And it's like, you remember when you're in high school and you felt like, so much angst and emotion all the time. Well, I feel like all his characters kind of like bring that out in you again. And I think that's kind of cool <laughs> because like, as you grow older, you you lose a little bit of that, like, I, I don't wanna say drive, you don't lose drive, but you lose that kind of like angsty emotion that you had when you were a teenager. So it's kind of fun to pick up these books and feel that again. And then number one, which I'm pretty sure most of you would have guessed this is the Fault in Our Stars. This is the first John Green book I ever read, so that might be why it's my number one pick. But it, I know a lot of you have read this book and you know how emotional this book is. This is like one of the books that actually brought me to tears at multiple parts in it. <laughs> and it's really hard for a book to do that to me. So the fact that this one could do that means it's a really good book. Um, there are like this book is just so sad but also so good and i flew through it i'm pretty sure well no i i took a little while to read this one because i was reading in high school and i wasn't as fast of a reader but i remember going to see the movie with my mom on mother's day after reading this book and <laughs> i was like really close to crying in the theater because it was so emotional and like such a uh, such a powerful movie. Yeah, I would strongly recommend this to like anyone. I think it's a fantastic book. This deals with kids that have cancer and end up falling in love. Um, that's gonna be difficult no matter what. So yeah, it's just a tragic love story, but I think it's worth the read for sure. And the names were so cool, like Hazel and Augustus. Those are really cool names. I love it. Like, that's just so original. Honestly, talking about all these books makes me want to do rereads of them. And I really wish I had the time to reread these books. I don't because I have so many other books that I need to read and I'm neglecting on my TBR. So that would be bad. <laughs> but maybe I will reread these eventually because they're definitely worth the read. Like I, I had such a great time with them the first time and just going over these is bringing back all that nostalgia and I really want to pick them up and just dive into them again. 
and just feel all those emotions again. Um, but I can't. But you guys should. And you should tell me how you feel about them. If you are reading these for the first time, I definitely want to know what your opinion is and how you feel about these books. So definitely let me know in the comments down below if you are going to read any of these awesome books. So here they are. Here is my stack of John Green. John Green, if you ever see this, you need to write more books because I want to read them. Thank you for going on this journey with me to see how I would rank these books. You guys, let me know down in the comments which John Green book is your favorite book because I want to know. I want to see if mine, like my feelings on these books kind of match up with you. Uh, maybe some of you guys love An Abundance of Catherines and are totally opposite of what I felt on them. Who knows? I would really be interested to find out. If you want to support me, I have a Patreon, which you can check out in the description down below. I also have a coffee page, which I will definitely put down there as well. You guys know the drill. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I post videos every Monday and Thursday. And until next time, keep on reading.